Universe Sandbox just received a huge update. Um, I mean, it's in the preview version right now, but basically they added a ton of new materials to the game and you can see that here on Earth. So today we're gonna use this new update and terraform Mars and the moon and a random planet because terraforming is now way more in depth and we can change the atmosphere and just everything a lot more than we used to. So let's start with Mars. All right, so this update is actually in a public beta now. So you should be able to go on Steam and get access to it. It might actually be fully out by the time this video airs, but you can see the main thing they added in this update is in the composition tab, they have all of these different materials that we can adjust on a planet. Before it was just iron silicate, water, and like the atmosphere pressure. So look, I'll show you. We can change the actual composition of Mars's atmosphere and that will change the atmosphere's color. So if we go to oxygen and start turning this up, you'll see, look at that. It's like almost like this purple color, but if we add, you know, different elements to it, it will change colors. Look at that. Okay, and another thing they've added that I've wanted to have in the game for a long time is being able to launch an object with an atmosphere into another object and have that object keep the atmosphere. So if we take a little moon, like if we took a moon and we're launching the moon at Mars like this, but we add a super thick, that's a big moon. <laughs> anyway, we add a really thick atmosphere to the moon. So like if we added a ton of oxygen, like one whole Earth's atmosphere of oxygen to it. So you can see now this moon is covered in oxygen and then we let this crash into Mars, then Mars will have oxygen in its atmosphere. We'll watch this collision. There it goes. And then we'll let this all cool down. And you can see just from that, look how much better Mars looks already. So that's gonna be our first step in terraforming it. Um, and we can do the same thing with water and we've always been able to do this. Well, not always. We've been able to do this for a while where you launch an object that has a ton of water on it. We change the water. You can see that water is actually going into the air. So it's like water in the atmosphere. So if you look at it now, now it's covered in a lot of water, but it's not fully water. So we'll see how this collision affects Mars. See if this will terraform it some more. Watch that go in. So you can see the way that the atmosphere reacts to these new materials is actually really cool um, because we've never had anything like this in Universe Sandbox. Okay, so it looks like the atmosphere is actually really thick now, but it could just be that a lot of the water is in the air right now. Because look at Mars. Mars is not supposed to look like that. Our life likelihood right now is 1.14, so there's a small chance that we've already terraformed it enough, uh, but there's, we could definitely do more. I'm just gonna speed up time to like years and we can see if anything starts to settle here. There we go, look at that, that looks much better. I think this is just a thick part of the atmosphere. Same with this, this looks like oxygen, it's that more purple color. Let's check our temperature out. It's pretty warm, which is good. 11, look it's rising just from doing that. The life likelihood's rising. I'm just gonna keep fast forwarding time till it stops rising. 20%, 60%? Guys, this is the first time you've ever been able to terraform objects without actually adjusting anything on the object. Look at it. That does not look like Mars, but it definitely is terraformed. So I'm going to see if I can raise the temperature a little bit to kind of get the ice to melt. So, okay, I'm going to throw an asteroid, but the asteroid, I think that just went into it. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. How is that explosion so big? I didn't even do that much. Um, we're gonna leave it, but this asteroid, we're gonna make it completely methane because methane's a very good greenhouse gas. So we want the air to be able to trap more heat. So we're gonna throw a methane rock. Okay, and that'll crash in. Okay, now we can <laughs> give it another like 50 years. Okay, let's check it out. Wow, okay. So you can see there's just a little bit of the surface left, but I think that did help with the ice. So if we zoom out, this is what Mars looks like now. I think there's a little too much water, so I'm just gonna manually help the water levels because it's really hard to get it and it'll just look better. Okay, but before I do that, our life likelihood's at nine right now. Ooh, let's give it a few more years to go back up to, we had it about 60. Let's see if I ruined it by adding methane. Oh, I definitely did not. It's like 70 now, okay. It's going down a little bit, but that's okay. 
check it out. This looks so weird. I wonder if when they release the full update, they're going to try to, I don't know, make the stuff spread around more because it seems like a lot of the gas is getting locked into one spot on the planet, but it does look great. We're going to lower the sea level just so we can start to see the surface. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that, I think. Uh, the atmosphere, see, it has these like really thick parts, but I don't know why it's doing that. I think that might go away over time or the whole thing will become like that. Oh my gosh, okay. The atmospheres are very cool because of how much control you have, but they're also kind of hard to get right. I mean, the atmosphere mass, we're gonna have to turn this down. It's very thick. I'll have to get used to this new system when I'm building planets. Okay, well, we got it about 70. It's only at seven now. I'm, I'm, it's actually really hard to try to keep it stable. Um, but we're going to try again on the moon. So that was kind of like a Mars demonstration, but let's go over to the moon. Okay, here we are at the moon. So in previous versions, in order to terraform the moon, you actually had to add a tiny bit of hydrogen just so that the water would stay on. So I wonder if they fixed that. So we're going to start by throwing a little asteroid that has oxygen on it. So this asteroid is going to give us our, an atmosphere on the moon. So we're going to make it a little bit of water a little bit of oxygen, some carbon dioxide, some uh, nitrogen, and then we'll see how that goes. Okay, here it goes, crashes into it. That might not have been enough. It doesn't look like much happened. How's our atmosphere mass? Do we have any now? A tiny atmosphere. Okay, so that did work. We just need something bigger. How big does it need to be to cover the whole surface? I feel like it should actually be pretty large. Air is mostly nitrogen. And then there's what, like 30% oxygen. So we'll do oxygen and nitrogen just like that, but then we'll make this a little bigger. Okay, so we got a giant rock now filled with nitrogen and oxygen. Oh, okay, well I was going very fast, but you can see that it did crash into it and it gave it kind of an atmosphere, but there's no clouds. So I think we need water for the clouds to work. How thick is our atmosphere now? It's about half of earth, which actually for the moon is gonna be pretty good. That might be a little too much. Um, let's give it some water now so we can have some clouds. Okay, this is like a giant thing of ice now. Let's slow it down so we can actually watch it crash into it. Okay, here it goes. We might need some more water than that. Let's just make this one enough to kind of cover the whole surface because we want like lakes on it too and oceans. Okay, here it comes. Boom. Okay, so you can see the in the atmosphere, you can see the actual water and there it is. A little bit of water on the surface. Let's speed up time and see if that spreads around like it should. Okay, it's been a few years now. Ooh, I think we might need some more water. It's all kind of concentrated there. So I'm gonna use the tools and material and add some water. There you go, you can see it get added. So how do I get clouds then? Does it need to be warmer so that the water evaporates? Oh, it looks like I shot a ton of water into the solar system. <laughs> huh, what's our temperature? 17, 18, 19. That's pretty good, actually. It's pretty warm on the surface. Clouds. Yeah, there's not any. I can manually add them, but I want to try to get them naturally. What if we just add water vapor? Planetscaping, water, gas. I'm adding the gas. You can see the gas, kind of. But it's turning to liquid water, too. Huh. I wonder why there's no clouds. Interesting. Okay, what's our life likelihood on here? 7.37, which for not even adjusting the settings manually, that's pretty good, I think. Okay, if any of you guys know how to get clouds, like why mine didn't show up, let me know in the comments. But for now, we're gonna try to do this with a random planet in a random system to try to create a habitable planet. Okay, so here's a random simulation. Well, just empty. We're gonna put a star in the middle. How big is this? This should work. It's almost twice as big as the sun, but that should be okay. Then we're gonna put a random rocky planet. Um, probably, probably about here. Okay. So you can see that this is definitely not terraformed. You could not live on this planet. So our goal is to, without manually typing in anything, make it the highest life likelihood possible. So I'm gonna start by throwing a moon that kind of has you know, the necessities for life. That's pretty big. So let's just kind of put everything we need in it, um, which is going to be, let's start by making it 100% water. So that's it if it was all water, but we're gonna need oxygen in here for the atmosphere, some nitrogen or also for the atmosphere. 
You can see the colors changing too, and look at the layers on the top. That's so cool. Carbon dioxide a little bit. We'll go with that. Let's see how that works. I feel like that's almost too big. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Probably like that big. Okay. Let's watch this crash into the planet and see if the, just throwing one thing at it can terraform the planet. I think that's water, the, the black, but it could actually be something else because you can get oceans of different stuff now. Look at the atmosphere literally showing up as like we can watch the atmosphere being formed. Okay, we'll speed up time a lot and we'll see how this works. The whole planet is burning. That's not good. Why is it burning? It's very slowly cooling. It's actually not cooling down. Is this, did we make the atmosphere too thick? The atmosphere, I actually made it 4,500 times thicker than Earth. I think that asteroid was still way too big. So we're just gonna pretend we made it one one hundredth of the size. Actually, maybe a little bigger. Is there any chance of life right now? Zero. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Wow, this planet's spinning super fast. Okay, put some water on there. And then we can also put some oxygen. Oxygen's black. So those black parts are liquid oxygen. That's how cold it was when we first threw these on. Okay. Oh, the atmosphere is definitely forming now. Give it a second. I feel like the gas should spread out quicker because it seems like it kind of gets stuck where it is. How is it heating up like this? Is it too close to the star? Maybe the star is outputting a lot of heat. We look at the luminosity. Oh yeah, it's 48 times hotter basically than the sun. So let's put you pretty far. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna make the luminosity of the star one and then put this back where it was. Cause then we know that we're at the right distance from a star. Okay, it is in the perfect spot now for life. You can see that I like made the star dimmer. How's our temperature now? It's pretty warm now, but I did add a lot of atmosphere to it. Ah, we're getting it. Look, 5.7. Okay, this might be really hard. I'm going to have to learn this new system of terraforming, but it does seem really cool, like the amount of customization we can get. So make sure to check out this update when it drops. Thank you so much to Dan Dixon for giving me preview access to this version of Universe Sandbox. He's um, the director of Universe Sandbox. So special thanks to him. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.